Oh, and it's like transfer to friggin' Moon Guard. <laughs> and we're live. We're live. It is Tuesday, folks. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Uh, Murder Hobo Links uh, stab <laughs> at a talk show between the roles. Uh, I am producing today, so if the audio sucks, it's on me. Uh, yeah. If you haven't been here before, welcome aboard. If you have been here, you know we'll do a few recaps and uh, then go on to our main discussion, uh, which I think you'll enjoy because Kyle has prepared a lengthy non-script to go ahead and cover. Uh, first I did? Off, yes, you did. You've sent it to all of us. <laughs> Emailed it to us. He forgot it. What? <laughs> follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. Uh, if you want to shoot the shit about uh, D&D, Join us in our Discord down below if you want cool shirts and bathroom yeah. mats and uh, sweatshirts and stuff like that. Uh, go look at our shop. We got some interesting things in there. Uh, finally, of course, if you want to join us on a Between the Rolls or join us in a one shot this Saturday, uh, M Hobo Inc., uh, Twitter or Gmail, uh, we'll get you in there. Carol will be running it. More on that in a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and introduce our fine cast. They couldn't make it, so let's go ahead and start uh, with Kyle. It, this <laughs> cast will do. <laughs> and Kyle takes off his ear. So we'll he... start with Carol. <laughs> Hey, why do you always? Why do you try to start with him? He always does this. Because he's high left on my screen. So. Oh man! All right. So hi everyone. I'm Carol. Hi everyone. I'm Kyle. I am the <laughs> awesome person who. Uh, <laughs> I really had to check on the keros bomb on kerosene heater and Is make sure human? the flame was going well. <laughs> Is it a human? <laughs> I love how he talks over me. You know. What? <laughs> Finish. I'm Kyle. I play Dewey Docomel, and I'll be talking to later tonight about the Between the Rolls. Wow. I think you oh, heard his feelings, you Carol. Heard Way his to go, bitch. <laughs> Carol, you're up next. Hey, apparently I'm really good at doing that in both the game and in this reality of hurting his feelings. So, hi, I'm Carol. I'm a commission mini painter, longtime vape gamer, and occasional GM, including this weekend, where I'm running a Halloween one shot. I can't wait. We. Play task. We basically ran it here with my friends, and it was a ton of fun. So I hope it's fun for you guys too, or whoever is coming to play. But this uh, Saturday isn't Halloween. I yeah, but that's what? because the campaign, the campaign is on Halloween, and every I, day is Halloween. You know, this it, is it, Halloween. This it, is Halloween. Halloween. It definitely Halloween. Is Halloween. The Halloween. campaign, okay? Once every two weeks is bad enough. <laughs> I didn't want to go on three. So, uh, but yeah, as for the campaign, I played Taryn, the half wood elf, half high elf uh, bard, who, um, <clears throat> holy shit, uh, I do not know how I'm going to freaking or she's going to freaking deal with being in full. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Next and up, because you, she's done friggin' blah 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 blah. Next up is David. <laughs> Fuck you, friend. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hi, I'm David. Uh, for for a long run, I've been. <laughs> I can be found here on BTR, <laughs> but um, I'm usually uh, on the Cacophony episodes. I play Zadar. Uh, in our long-running soap opera, and um, campaign. <laughs> yeah, it's not a campaign. It's not a campaign. Uh, but I'm just a D and D enthusiast, and you know, closet theory crafter. So that's <laughs> that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> so there you go, folks. We're just regular people who uh, hate each other's guts and talk over Carol, which is the only thing that unifies <laughs> most of us. It's our pastime, uh, <laughs> folks. Uh, like I said, we're going to do a couple recaps of the games. We only had two this past week, so that'll make it short. <coughs> Carol. Uh, and then we will go on to a description on campaigning during the ascendancy of an empire. Uh, our next to last in the series. Next week will be uh, in the decline of the empire. So, David, uh, you're going to be up first. You're going to tell us about episode 160 Holy shit, 160 games. Uh, mm -hmm. Purloined Coins. Uh, cacophony, tell us about it. All I gotta <laughs> say is, money, 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 money. Sorry. Had to. <laughs> Are you paying Dewey more or Dibble more money? 
You, you know I'm in oh, charge, obviously. so I can just mute the shit out all for. All, I know, right I know. <laughs> uh, yes, our last episode of Cacophony involved the funny money, the Play-Doh. So, yes, a little currency confusion in the city of Cacophony. Uh, our intrepid young adventurers get hired by our resident pain in the ass, uh, Skippy Lee, uh, to find his lost <laughs> coins. So, yeah, it was a great episode. Uh, I played, Carrie played, Caitlin played. So you had Camille, you had Daphne. And believe it or not, Daphne made it through the entire episode without killing somebody. I so, know what happened. That was amazing. That You're not was feeling amazing. well. Uh, she was she was busy with something else uh, during that she, episode. She got a little bit shock value. I yeah, think. she did. Uh, yes, our uh, episode ended uh, ended with uh, let's see a tavern brawl. Uh, well, didn't en end with the tavern brawl. It was comprised of a tavern ball brawl. Uh, multiple visits to a brothel. <laughs> Descriptive visits to the brothel. To the brothel. Uh, and uh, <laughs> to the pawn shop. So, uh, yes, things uh, things were lost as far as money's concerned. And hopefully we can get some of that back. <clears throat> and there is a magic item that fascinates the hell out of me. And it is the Avarice Stone. So... That is the source of all the despair in that episode. Check it out. It's in our YouTube channel. So. Good one. Next up, episode 161. Holy shit, 161 episodes. Uh, getting to Fulton. Now, bear with us, folks, because Carol is really having issues <laughs> in dealing with this. Uh, I'm not going to say she has been singled out to be tormented because that is not the case uh there's just a lot of torment to go around and right now it's her turn on the merry-go-round so carol give us a brief description on what's going on in the campaign because it's got lots of time left lots oh, of time brief i mean well geez i don't know i will try to keep it brief uh so we got, oh, let's see, if I recall, if it started out, we were still in Yaddle, and there was still a monk running around uh, trying to kill somebody. Uh, and I was wrong on who they were trying to kill, because, and I think most of us were, because we thought <coughs> Dewey was their target. And Dewey, well, was their target, because he was headed back to the boat after making a stop to find some papers at... Um, Shit, I'm gonna forget the damn gnome's name. Our info person, help, the handy info person who was the professor at the Grand Academy. Um, I'm familiar. Come on, with Carol. That. You're gonna you're gonna tell us yeah. all of this. Come I on. forget the fucking if, if, name. If you're gonna do this, you got to do it right. Come on. Yeah, well, I, I, give, I give enough description that people figure we'll know exactly who it is. Who but is anyway, it? You, I don't. Who is it? This so I don't remember the guy's Turn name. Buckle Turn buckle skin. Ben skin? That's some not of, it. Some of, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I, I fucking wow. it. So. <laughs> Go like ahead. Term. Tell me I'm wrong in the way I wrote that character. No, 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 yeah, no. I wrote it that. Was, no, Dewey, Dewey Post put it in private to me. That's pretty sure it was right. It's Turnbuckle, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Turnbuckle? Okay. Ben turnbuckle. skin. Ben skin. Well, I'll go with Turnbuckle. That's no, enough. it's both. And there's no in. It's Turnbuckle. Ben skin. All right, well, you're lengthening this out. So, but anyways, he went to go find yeah. papers and left behind, and he did. He found he found some info. <clears throat> Probably going to be useful once we That's all know not... what it is. Bullshit. <laughs> you show me it. You show me it. it. Mm -hmm. So then, as he was walking back to the ship, which we were all on board, he got attacked by that monk. Uh, fortunately, we have apparently somebody helping us because it was a oh, major. Yeah him up like a freaking Christmas tree and you be, then you nat 20 him and cut off his head end of the monk end of that problem but you found out that the real target was my knees. so not that I'm really surprised I know everybody in the party has somebody after them I think at this point except for maybe Lucas and who knows 
Um, but we got on the ship. We headed. We, we headed to uh, Fulton. Uh, there was there was a bit of stuff that happened on the ship, but I'm trying to get through this quickly. So we get to Fulton, and we have about four hours to get this done after sunset because apparently midnight. Now that I realize, thank you, Frank, for clarifying. Uh, midnight. Uh, that is- information had to be discovered. I was not going to hand that shit out. No, 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 no. But I don't think Dewey said it either. No, he, he didn't. said <laughs> he said all night. And now you know, but he's also freaking out because. So to tell all of you out there, it's midnight. We have four freaking hours to get this done, yeah. or the world. Dewey said that. That you said all. You said tonight. I don't think you said midnight. Yeah. I believe you kept saying tonight. No, I because... want to stand here and discuss this while everybody else is <laughs> running. Hey, hey, I was thinking till dawn, not till midnight. So um, wow. that's fine. It was a good clarification. But he's <laughs> 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 gonna. Yeah. I've here, hold on. I think I've got SpongeBob. I do casting the rainbow. Okay. What do I, okay. Fine. Well. What? Well, anyways, we. We go in via the swamps uh, because we were trying to stop some messengers from the lighthouse to get to town uh, and warn everybody that an attack was incoming. They're going to attack the town to cover us. Now, in hindsight, I'm not sure how smart this was. I still think it would have been better if we just snuck in there <laughs> because, you know, what's the difference? You know, now they're, everyone's going to be at alert because there's an attack. So I don't, I didn't understand the logic of that whole thing. Karen was kind of against it anyways, because unnecessary death right now is bad in her mind. So anyways, we go up into the swamps. We catch a couple of, we do catch a couple people who, who did leave. And uh, basically uh, Lucas, whoops, hang on, sorry. Uh, Lucas and uh, uh, Menise took them out easily. And then we turn around and there's a fucking Naga that attacks the party. And the Commodore goes charging on in and promptly gets dead. We killed, he killed the Commodore. Hey, you know, we got rid of our babysitter. I guess that's not terrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, don't, don't tell, don't tell Ernie I said that. Cause that's, you know, the Commodore is Lucas's uncle and he actually <clears throat> does the hair. So, uh, but it was, it was an interesting fight, but there was a bit of confusion on whether or not we're supposed to run away or fight it. And I think there was one point we're all going to run away uh, because De- uh, Dewey and the Commodore got banished. And then they came back a couple rounds later. And I think we're all about to book it. And then the fucking Commodore goes and attacks the Naga and then dies. It's like, okay, I'll stay and fight it. We did beat it. We took it down. And uh, and uh, we did say Venice managed to carry off the Commodore to the lighthouse and uh, basically resurrected him. However, I don't know what happened because he was still poisoned. I know so. what happened to him. <laughs> is he dead? Is he dead? You'll have is to find dead? out. He is a badass, so I kind of think that he, has a, that he probably probably survived. He's not a badass. He would have died. I I, he did take 160 really. hit points of damage. so He yeah. only took on. And how much did he actually have, though? 82. Yeah. Or 80. <laughs> Yeah. yeah That's permadeath. <laughs> so then, to make our way, and so then we do go, go to town with uh, the producer, which nobody could hear, sitting there going, hurry up and get to Fulton, hurry up and get to Fulton. While I'm trying to ask the police, why are you fucking with us, man? You're evil. You should be on the other side. I swear to God, he's going to take the freaking staff and run away with it. Uh, we get to town. And we, she, we she's <laughs> mixing and matching. <laughs> what? Oh wait, wait. What am I? I'm trying not. I'm trying to gloss over stuff too. That you're doing a great just, job because I don't remember that part. <laughs> no, that was that was there. Oh, I do. Remember, oh, I remember on the road and we had a whole lot of people on crosses. Thankfully, not my family. That was good. Uh, didn't see them or anybody so on this side oh, of town. Right. I, I didn't see anyone I knew. I could say that probably they could be a bunch of fans of mine because Taryn was a bard and she was a performer, so she had fans in town. Depends on how long that road is. <laughs> is your arm okay when you reach back and pat yourself <laughs> yeah. on the back like that, or does it yeah. sprain yeah. this area? No, no, because I'm flexible. So Pulls a tricep. <laughs> <laughs> 
So we get into, oh, so we, so we do the whole invisibility thing. We make ourselves invisible. Then both my knees and Lucas fly us in. We land and we see the lovely scene at the end where <clears throat> they're crucifying Folks, people. there are, uh, it's pretty specific. Let you, uh, you, let, you let, let them watch it. Uh, Gruesome. But be aware, it is very descriptive yeah. and not for the faint of heart. It no, may it cause really a nightmare because I, I, you know what? I'm going to break my arm. I knocked it out of the park on that description. Yeah. Yeah. You see, great crusher. dungeon masters experience the things they want to describe. <laughs> yeah, that's what <laughs> that's authors do as well. This is, this was, I'll tell you what, the last. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out when you put tape over the mouth, they can't say the safe word. It also keeps the kerosene in. But all I'm going to say is, ever since we were to me, this game has been unbelievably good and unbelievably scary. And I, I said to him, for the first one of the few times in my life, probably the second time ever, this game scares the player. I'm actually afraid of what I'm gonna, what what we're gonna experience in the the final episode or two or whatever. Um, it's it's scary and it has me, boy, it has my brain constantly, you know, coming up with conspiracies and shit. The it's hamster is gonna die on that wheel. <laughs> it is. It's, it's 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 gonna have a heart attack from the freaking effort, man, because it just it, it won't stop. It's but it's because it's so. Fucking good. So if you're not watching it, freaking go and watch it. Start back and said, start with the Yaddle episodes and go right on because this has been just a fantastic. Start with the Yaddle episodes because that was 36. The first 35 sucked donkey <laughs> ass. <laughs> People are intimidated when you say start binging the whole thing. I'm trying to break it in a sort of a bite size. I, I'm going to binge The Mandalorian in probably late November. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, well, who isn't? F folks, uh, both episodes are in the archive, uh, tinyurl.com, mhobo Inc. Archive. It's our YouTube channel. Go ahead and check them out. Uh, both were pretty good. We did not have a Margu session this week, uh, or this past week. Uh, we will have a Margu session this week. Uh, they are going to be doing the uh, Magnificent Seven because uh, I really had nothing better to do than to... Just do a standard Magnificent Seven with absolutely no twists or turns. It's Bullshit. I know. Book. Uh, <laughs> and that brings us to our main topic, campaigning uh, in an empire that is on the rise. And I will turn the reins over to Kyle. Kyle, you're on. All right. Pass the reins. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. That's how I was I about to mute myself. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <sighs> just, just a moment of silence here. I'm enjoying For it. For Carol's psyche. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did jokingly write him that, uh, that as a therapy session. That, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll tell you what. The last when we do the wrap up of this campaign i'm gonna need it as a therapy session because the personal horror that's gonna happen is just gonna be through the roof hey, well, carol were we uh moving on to the next topic or yes! were you, just... you oh, okay or we were we doing that were we doing that okay i wasn't sure yes. if if i am i the one who's hosting this i can yes. i can go ahead and mute her right now Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> finally you know carol won't be able to talk <clears throat> over us for once all right. Uh, as Frank was saying, <laughs> uh, we are talking about uh, 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 <coughs> what are we talking about? Some bullshit campaign idea. Ascendancy, rise of an empire. That's now, the if one. you <laughs> have been watching all the previous ones, uh, uh, you know that uh, running an empire, you need tribes, you need city states, <laughs> you have nations, which we skipped over. But they're pretty much city-states, except much larger and more complicated. And we wanted to get to the interesting stuff, which is empires, because they're evil, and sort of, or something Not like necessarily. that. Not necessarily. <laughs> Not necessarily. However, as I was planning, as I was writing, I realized I made a terrible and awful mistake, which was trying to talk about how to run it 
and get rules set up for players and then talking about the campaign. No, no, no. As a DM, you got to make the campaign first and then put your limitations or your homebrews on your players. So we've rearranged everything tonight. It'll be so much better. Oh, yeah. Okay, can you do that? Do you want me to go ahead? I should unmute him probably now. You you probably should, yeah. (laughs) No, but um, as I said, um, empires are just amalgamations of all the things that we've talked about previously or neglected because they were boring. And uh, it's when one of those things uh, finally (coughs) becomes tired of being lazy and inactive and decides to begin and start conquest and making the world a better place for it. Uh, And so most empires are started off on conquest. Rome uh, was defending itself by conquering everyone else. The Huns just wanted more goodies for themselves and... Nazis were greedy yeah, bastards. <laughs> Nazis were greedy bastards. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, with that, guys, you know, what part of an empire, when it grows, when it expands, what do you find interesting? Do you guys have any examples? I mean, uh, Manifest Destiny for the United States. That was uh, that empire's reason for growing. Let's start with David. I did warn everybody, so no one here is flat-footed. My favorite is nationalism and dissension. There's my favorites. An empire descending into anarchy on itself. Hmm. Are we (laughs) talking about the rise of an empire or the fall of an empire? Well, the rise. He's a time traveler. Yeah. No, (laughs) uh, uh, talking about things that one of the things about an empire uh, with the rise of an empire is the things that uh, make it thrive, you know, which are usually lines of communication, um, you know, uh, commerce and security are are the main things that make it do. So one of the things that I kind of like, you mentioned the manifest destiny kind of thing. Mm hmm. You know, uh, you know, you talked about security uh, aspects of empire states bond, you know, uh, bonding together uh, Mm -hmm. to fight off a common enemy and then expanding and even incorporating that that enemy into the empire. So those are the kind of things that I like to see happen. So when we go to the. The fall of empires. I'm ready because I just mentioned. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> All right, Carol, you look like you could talk for a while. <laughs> so we'll go with Frank first. Frank, rise of an empire. What changes that tribe, that city, state, nation to switch over and just start expanding exponentially? And what do you prefer to see when that happens? I'm a big fan of Roman provinces because that was their money pit. Uh, the the now deserts of northern Africa were the wheat fields that fed the empire. Uh, but first, they had to get rid of uh, those uh, pesky elephant raiders uh, from uh, crap. The name has just eluded me, and I, I love the Roman stuff. Carthage? Carthage, thank Edge, you. Yeah. Uh, they, they had to go ahead and... Uh, deal with the Carthaginians who were at the time a more advanced society, uh, better tenured in the landscape and had a huge breadbasket. So uh, for me, building a campaign, I would, I think I would rather focus on the outer provinces. Maybe you need to go kill or save Jesus. Uh, Maybe you want to go build a wall in England, something like that. Uh, That would be my starting point. That's what I like. I like the fringes because why why the hell would you want to go kill these people if they didn't have stuff so you got to go figure out what kind of stuff they had and give it a reason for conquest otherwise you're just killing yeah. like a nazi <laughs> <laughs> resource management there you go. sometimes you just have to clean out the inside of the country before you really make that empire great again well now the romans uh <laughs> they absorbed all of the assets. Uh, they took the Sumerian horse riders. They took the uh, arrow guys. Uh, they were a lot like um, or the archers uh, from 
Egypt. Uh, they took the chariots. Da 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 da. I mean, they they incorporated their military with foreigners, and may or may not have led to their downfall, depending on which author you believe. Because amalgamation is a good thing. The whole uh, melting pot. Melting pot or like a salad. I like salads because then you can add that spicy radish. No? Okay. Carol, hey, rising of an empire. You know, we're starting at the beginning. Nation turns big. How's it doing it and why is it doing it? Mm, nah, to, so the interesting part of this whole series is that in my in my setting, I have one particular country that I hadn't really visited and hadn't really thought much about and it's really got me to think about that one place. So uh, I mentioned there's there's one place in the very south where I like the thought of this. It's an empire now, but it started out as a bunch of feuding city states. So I w will say that one of them got bigger and conquered all the others in the area. There's just a bunch of warlords and a lot of lawlessness. It's sort of like the fringes are ever. There's no fringes. It's just everywhere. It's all fringes. So just one person got in, started, you know, conquering everything else and adding those assets in. Uh, I think so. I think that's I, I love I like warfare and that's and that type of and I sort of like chess. So I feel it's a bit, you know, there even may be negotiate. I mentioned this too last week. You know, you can negotiate with your neighbor to go out and take out this third party. So maybe a combination of both negotiation and warfare. Negotiation I guess that's at the cool. tip of my blade. <laughs> well, that's now, I've got this sandwich, or I've got this really big stick. Which would you prefer? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, Makes sense. Well, have, but if you have a bigger stick than their big stick, then you could you could prefer the stick. But I have a sandwich in one hand and yeah, a stick probably, in the other. But if that sandwich is like me, liver and uh, you know, liver and onions and all sorts of nastiness, I'll take yep. that. I'll take my. I'll. I'll, t I'll. You can try the stick. And that was a lot of mindset of my warlords. There's too. your but, meme, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> Carol, I'll take the stick. <laughs> That'd be Speaking of which, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Oddfish Game, and their new scent, oh God, Carol's God. Hepatitis Fence Post. Her <laughs> <Or> liver sandwich. <laughs> yes, thanks for picking me up. I totally spaced on that. Oh my god, I can't believe it. What about Pirate Dog Dice? You forgot? Well, I don't have my normal tray with my Adventure Sense or my Pirate Dog Dice in it. So my apologies to our sponsor, Pirate Dog Dice and OddFishGames.com. Feel free to check them out if your game stinks. Uh, make it smell better. Better be super nice to your wife Or tonight. play with your cat. You know, Carol, you make me want to eat this, which just oh. happened to be on the table. <laughs> Wow. I'm, I'm taking them all. <laughs> but you don't know is it's actually just one giant pill. That's how he's writing the next campaign. Just yeah. <laughs> You'll have all that. That's how he makes the map. He gets up on the second story on the roof, puts the poster board out there, swells a few of those, and waits. Creating an empire, folks. Geography. <laughs> Very important. Uh, looks like it's going to be an archipelago campaign. <laughs> Clearly, they mean empty the gutters and throw the debris onto the pallet. Yeah, just throw that shit wherever it lands. Well said. All right. Well, okay. As uh, two of you mentioned already, empires being an amalgamation. <clears throat> um, how is your empire? How is your city-state? How is your nation? Um, which is just this base of culture. Now going to grab in this other language, this other culture and so on and so forth. And as they continue to expand, how are they dealing with the fact that, you know, one country here believes that raising an army of undead is totes cool, Magoo. And the other one used to be a theocracy that was based on burning everything dead. Let's start with Frank. You look competent. <laughs> Uh, or constipated, I can't tell. Perhaps you should take one of those pills early. I, I'm taking like 20 of them, probably with alcohol. And then I've got some heavy machinery in the back. I need to dig a trench. Uh, I, I, again, I'm going to have to go to uh, the Roman playbook. Uh, they went ahead and emulsified the culture, took what was good, 
uh, and brought it into their, uh, I, I guess, uh, way of life. And then oh, to interrupt sure. what they thought was good, not necessarily what was good, what they thought was good. Correct. Uh, if you guys make great shields, you're going to be our blacksmiths. No questions asked. Uh, fuck your food supply. But uh, with the Romans, they knew they had to make deals because you can't just go in, kill everything and then move your people. in. it just doesn't work that way. So they tried to assimilate as much of the culture that they could into their own uh, while beating out the stupid stuff. Uh, I, I believe they did let you worship your own gods uh, as long as you maintain the Roman law. So uh, there was a lot of give and take even at the empire status, and I would have to use that as part of the blueprint. You just cannot go in, kill everybody, and say this is how it's going to be because then you become Hitler uh, and your empire doesn't last very long. The Roman Empire assimilated, uh, and it stuck around for a, a, a few years, a couple years. So I say assimilate, kick the trash to the curb. Uh, your whole theocracy versus necromancy, pff, somebody's going to be pissed. I mean, that's that's just the way it is. <laughs> uh, you know, and I'll I'll go over to Palestine and say, uh, you know, the carpenter guy. <laughs> they didn't much care for that shit. So, but that uh, it's that actually was a, that was Palestine, internal. New Palestine, Indiana. That's true. De <laughs> decent basketball, folks. Uh, but yes, that that was infighting uh, among their own religious leaders, and that's that's all I'm going to say about religion because you just can't win that. So I would say, no, no you can't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would I would say uh, try and emulsify the situation and uh, highlight the good throw away the bat sure all right david on to you he wants to live and let live and take the good stuff <coughs> you take the good you take the bad um there you before have you know it there you have there you go <laughs> before you know it, there you have. so how are you how is your empire dealing with these situations how are they oh, dealing it's with so the back oppressive man i mean it's just like this <laughs> It's just like there's only one one rule, you know. <laughs> so, um, swallow this rope. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of highlighting our campaign and stuff like that. Uh, no, I mean, I mean, ideally, I mean, it would be like Frank's uh, Roman model, you know, assimilate and take uh, take what's the best parts. But I mean, you do have those nations out there that are just like, you know, and unfortunately, their ring usually doesn't last long when they try to impress their ideals, their values, their theocracy, the, you know, you know, upon the the masses, and you know, of course you know, things, things happen, you know, um, I don't know. I think I, I kind of like the idea of, uh, polytheic, you know, uh, empire, you know, multiple gods, you know, kind of like we, we, we have in D and D like in the cities and stuff like that, like water deep. And I mean, I don't know. Are, are there any of the cities, uh, religious restrictive, in D and D, in the world, Cacophony is not. Cacophony has uh, four major religious venues, as you well yeah. know. Uh, yeah. If we talk D and D, uh, the yeah. Forgotten yeah. Realms, Thay exclusively worships um, uh, the one of the fire gods. Mm -hmm. You can have Bane and Cyric in there. Yeah, but. The only church is the church to the fire god. And... Right, right. Yeah, well, so... yeah, that's the thing. You know, you could have it to where, you know, the the empire decides what's got, what gods are acceptable, you know, and, mm -hmm. and things like that, you know. But uh, as far as, like, culturally and things like that, I mean, you know, assimilation is always good. That's how you get good cuisine. That's how you get, you know, good food, and, you know. Music, sure. art, you know, hookers, you know, that too. Oh. <laughs> uh, but nice. also with that comes uh, technology, assimilating an another uh, country's 
technology, you know, it furthers the development of your own, you know, that becomes part of the, the rising empires, you know, kind of resource, you know, at that point. NASA. You know? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, Carol, did you want to have anything else as far as uh, assimilation and getting everyone working together? I know I previously said the Soviet Union's method was to take everybody and move them everywhere else and play the shuffle game. Mm -hmm. Destroy <laughs> everyone's that, culture. I like that idea. <laughs> I mean, no, I actually, I do like, I said I do like Frank's answer. I mean, like I said, that it does it makes sense. I mean, and it works. Um, but the but the thing I would I would add to that is the like for example, you know, you get like two really opposites, you know, for religious or whatever, whatever sort of thing. I think you I think you know at the beginning you have to kind of take a hard line on certain things. So like let's say all right, so to change the example up a bit. So let's say you've got like uh, the early, you know, Puritan church versus a bunch of Satanists and, and you're trying to put them together. Well, somebody, somebody, you, one, whoever side I think conquers, and it, it, you have to have the strength to hold that, that you have to have the strength to be able to hold it too and not lose it. If the uh, company, if the country you've just taken over uprises against you, you need to have like an iron force at the beginning. You know, you could start hard and then you can let up over the years. Or okay, let me so take this for example. You take yeah. one side of your groups, let's talk, say, the Puritans and the Satanists, and we just take them, put them on three boats, send them across the country to conquer a new world with blankets and. <laughs> 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 yeah, but that's not going to get rid of enough people. So it got rid of enough for you, got Trump. <laughs> and got a Small new pox. colony. <laughs> hey, that's how nations ri rise sometimes. They get rid of their troublemakers. I mean, hey, that's how you got Australia. the United States and Australia. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I mean. Uh, who can forget the good old British Empire? Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of which, British Empire, they had a big old navy. Um, mm -hmm. These places rise. And <clears> David, <throat> you were hinting at it, trying to get to the... Uh, well, what's that thing when you do one thing to the other? When you talk about one thing and then you switch to the other? You pivot? <laughs> nah, close, close. I can't think of it. Uh, what's it called? I, I okay. know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the thingamajigger. The yeah. Technology advances. What advances in your empire do they have? Obviously, we were talking about assimilation, taking what's mm -hmm. good and adding that. And obviously making your uh, empire more of a steam engine when it comes across the next place it encounters right. to conquer. Um, right. What kind of things do you envision your empire of having? It's not transition. It's a uh, war machine, man. <laughs> Technology <laughs> that can be used to conquer others <laughs> or, or conquer like rough Segway. terrain, you know geographical boundaries and stuff like mm. that how to how to you know technology that can be used for that like for example you know building a strong navy you know uh british you know, different things like that uh mm. yeah so roadworks yeah. roadworks uh creating lines of trade and stuff like that destroying villages or whatever you know that compete for trade and just keep one route going kind of like you know, uh, Genghis Khan did, you know, with the Silk Road and stuff like that. So, you know, it's where he controlled the trade, you know, so any kind of technology that would help facilitate that with Rome, it was paved streets, you know, and things like that. So, yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, Carol, how, uh, what advantages does your empire have to start off with? I haven't thought of that. <laughs> you know, I didn't think this through. Um, Gosh, it's it like I sent right you there. an email right there. <laughs> I don't know. Lynn. I even gave you a list of examples. I, I did all the alls I could. I worked today and I came back and I crashed for a couple hours because I was tired. Um, let's see. What advantages does my... As it said, the best part of this is that I'm coming up with this building, this little this empire. Um... Well, I mean, they're, they're. I mean, what was that spark, that fire that allowed them to take over the next town, then over the next town, the next town? 
I'm going to go. I'm going to go with um, it was a very big city. So I would say numbers of people. I will say technology. So technology in terms of armor and weapons and such. I mean, it was a really, you know, things were very chaotic and such. And this is probably the one place that had everything more or less pulled together and they could go out and just start conquering. So I, just, I would say those are the two biggest things. And they and said, and mine does have like a, a religion uh, to it too. That, that, I don't know if that's really an advantage, but you know, hmm. clerics. Was strong I mean, people. obviously if your army can continue to fight uh, and the other sides can't, you win. Yeah, exactly. So I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, clerics with a strong faith uh, and such that they can cast spells, you know, healing and such, keeping, keeping the army going. Um, you know, and as for like food and stuff, well, I think they're, they're basically running around taking from all the places they conquer. So I'll go with, I'll go with tech, basically technology, uh, their armor, right. their weapon, better metal. Frank, what are you working with on your empire? Two things, location. Uh, you have to be in a spot that can be easily fortified for Rome. It was the seven Hills. Uh, they can build outposts there. They can see enemies coming in. Uh, if they get the high ground, they can direct their armies to move. The second one, uh, with the only exception of uh, the American Civil War, is better tacticians uh, will help you win the battles. Uh, it is routinely considered that the South had better generals than the North, uh, but they did not have the economic backing uh, to go ahead and expound on their advantage. But if you've got good generals like Caesar or Scipio or Scipio Africanus, uh, you are going to kill the other side and they will not be able to fight. Uh, so initially, at least, you have to take David's approach, not particularly scorched earth, but you have to bring them to heal. Uh, but first, you've got to have that easily defendable location because if you're just out in the middle of nowhere, they're going to get you from every side. That's just my opinion. You don't start a second front in Russia. You don't no. wage a land, a land war, war in Asia. In Asia. <laughs> <laughs> we need that guy on here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen to both of those, by the way. Oh, man. So, so, yeah. Sure, yeah. No, you guys, you, all three of you are absolutely bloodthirsty. Um, it's one the, of the things that I don't I'm know, gonna... one of you really went with Rome, man. Second place is just first loser. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but let's face it, Kyle. This is for D. You know, I'm thinking in terms of D and D. And let's face it, it is a little more exciting when you give up. We have warfare and intrigue. You know, for your players. I'm. I am trying to do this from a strict standpoint. <laughs> what would I want on my table, and run and run with? You know, and I said I love intrigue and I love, and yet yeah, I love. The, the battles and such so you know sure why not you know what carol i just thought i would be creative and be like you know what makes an empire work and then you start throwing in wrenches because you know that's where it's gonna really stick it to them <laughs> think about yeah. the russian uh empire they grew up under totally different circumstances they got their asses handed to them by the germans twice but it, their vast resources, i.e. their land, is what saved their bacon. Mm -hmm. I think the that and their the ability <laughs> to make babies really quick. Yes. Yeah. Climate, climate the, the Russian winner is what did in Hitler. Napoleon and mm -hmm. Hitler. Yeah. Well, one of the things that they taught us in the military was there's uh, three things that, that matter if you want to win a war. And that's bullets, beans, and bandages. So... I mean, a healthy, well-fed army fights and fights well. So, yeah, that's all that I'm saying. clearly drilled in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I was right. waiting for the sir, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so we got the empire. We talked about how it expands, <laughs> advantages it has, who's ruling it, and how are they ruling it, really? I mean, is it a theocracy? Is it 
the one true god is now going to cleanse the land of all the other gods? Or at least you acknowledge that there is only one major god and the rest of the gods are below him. Uh, is it a wizard and his minions of wizards? Or is it a royal bloodline that's important? Or maybe you just got really good at stabbing your empire in the back and you made a republic. Speaking of which, Carol, you like to stab uh, players in the back. Hey! What? I Welcome did. to Murder Hobo, folks. Traitor is <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Get over it, okay? Dewey needs to get over it. Um, so does Head so Wound Harry, but he's dead. And he's dead. <laughs> no, he's not. It's a freaking one shot. You don't ever permanently die in a one shot or stay a statue or. <laughs> no. Uh, <clears throat> so my land, I think, on surface, it looks like it's royal blood, but <clears throat> it's really a theocracy which that's the religious one right because carol's brain is not totally firing here uh it'd be if it's a church the church is really running things uh basically you do have a king who's putting out laws but he's looking at the church for approval that's that's how i do it mike because it said basically there's a trinity of gods and that's it and i have here the 15 <laughs> they don't Ten Ten commandments, commandments. They don't forbid. I have a plan where they did, did at one point, and it's changing the way the as I write it. Uh, but it was you. They literally have one god in it. You couldn't worship anything. Even visitors had to leave their holy symbols at the at the border. Fuck uh, that shit. Very. They were very. very they, in other words, when the rules were created, they were extremely superstitious. So they were afraid they would offend their god by having anybody else pay lip service to any other gods in their kingdom. However, the one I'm talking about, though, they're not these days, they're not as intolerant as that is. They're not as superstitious. So you did. So if visitors come in and such, you know, but they, they do have a state religion. They don't. It's just not exclusive to everything else. Sure. So then in the smaller colonies or provinces outward uh does the clergy also rule there or are they attempting to operate behind the shadows behind proxy governors that's what it is yeah that's really what it is it's it's basically there looks like you said you have a government mostly it's it's the, mostly it's all coming down from the king but you're right he'd have to have governors or you have to have yeah right. feudal yeah. system and this isn't a nation anymore guys it's an empire you got to have minions yeah, Otherwise, this thing does not work or doesn't get very those, big. A lot of those warlords, if they decide to play nice with the with the king, uh, were left in charge. So, But all of it is ultimately the orders still come down from the king and the king still looks at the church for approval. <clears throat> okay. But there's a lot. Yeah, but the probably the church probably doesn't have as tight a grasp on the further away you get away from the uh, capital. I kind of it's... like uh, David's city-state in Last Between the Rolls. Last Between the Rolls, that was 159. Can you believe it? 159 episodes? This is 162. What? I don't know if you guys knew that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? Wow. Between the Rolls, like you count... Is that? Uh, this is, is this counted as part of the games? Mm -hmm. No. What's well, on count? No, no. I just like screwing around with that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, hook, so, line, and sinkers. Games, and I think this is 87 or 88. Oh. Wow. Yeah, that's a few. That's a few. We're, we're All right. Uh, wow. On to the next guy. Um, we had the Chinese uh, uh, dynasties, empires, and one of their things that they did was they didn't care who was ruling, that things worked well, and if they did, you had the divine right to rule. And once things turned bad... Someone could replace you, and it was their divine right to rule as long as they made things better. David, how is your empire being ruled, and who are the minions that are keeping the laws in place on the outskirts? It's a military rule. Uh, you have a general or a war chief. Praise that, Caesar. That's, that's in charge. Uh, your city-states make up uh, your forum, your senate. Um, yeah, I mean, and that's pretty much it. Like, uh, based on, 
uh, the outcome, the expansion of the empire and all that, you know, if, uh, you know, the Senate's not happy with the, the leader in charge, you know, they can always promote somebody else and take that away or stab them, whatever, you know, we know how that worked out for Caesar. So, but, you know, but I'm seeing more of a military state, you know, with uh, the commander in chief or war chief being sure. the executive person of the, the empire, you know, yeah. eventually they'll ascend to emperor or something like that. Once the em empire is stable, mm -hmm. then you can start going with, like you said, with, uh, you know, the, you know, Chinese empire model and stuff like that. So. Sure. I mean, an empire is hard to rule and there's no one better than to have your military and your soldiers with strong heads on their shoulders, keeping everyone in check in line. Frank, what do you think? Bureaucracies rule the world uh, because it doesn't really matter whether or not the <laughs> emperor says you're going to do this. Uh, because if he's 600 miles away, nobody gives a shit what he says unless their job depends on it. So the regional governor or the regional magistrate or the regional general uh, may have to answer. He may be sitting pretty on his own fiefdom, uh, raking in the tax money, which mostly gets to the emperor. Uh, but at some point in time, there will be a call for payment. And if the bureaucracy has been fucking around, they are simply a different cog in a different pin and they can get replaced. Uh, with that in mind, I would also say the rich historically rule uh, because you might be able to kick my ass, but I can go ahead and rent three guys and they'll kick yours. Uh, <laughs> so... And they'll enjoy it. <laughs> they'll enjoy it, and they'll get paid, and they'll be kind of loyal to me. Uh, but that's more of a descendancy, which is next week, and uh, we'll talk about lopping off heads when somebody thinks they're way too better than somebody else, and I'll get horribly brutal with that. But I would so say, many heads, yes. not enough duffel bags. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You can get that shirt. Or, or I'm going to get days. it. Uh, but I would say bureaucracies rule it, whether it's a theology uh, made up of regional bishops, whether it's the military structure, whether it is a magocracy or majocracy, uh, and it's done by sixth level wizards. Uh, but in the end, it, if the head honcho ain't getting what he or she wants, uh, that bureaucracy is going to go ahead and be replaced. Uh, and as many cogs needed, uh, we'll fill it because there's always somebody waiting to take over that big spot mm -hmm. because people sure. think small. I like uh, the witchers uh, structure that they had with the wizards mm -hmm. and all that were kind of like the ruling class or what whatever. What happened to those guys? Uh, that's right. They got their shirt. Oh, yeah. Started. But they had that mage <laughs> war going on, you know. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I like the fantasy in it. You know, I thought it was great. Yeah, that's it, why we're here, David, for the fantasy of it. We'll exactly. get to that point in well, a little bit. <laughs> I started thinking, you know, maybe I'm being too close to real life. Then maybe you start injecting some fantasy into it. I Let me know. go ahead and chime in on that since I burned people last one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Them up between the roles, execution, creative execution methods. And that's we totally how you run an empire, about. creative executions. <laughs> it serves <laughs> two purposes. <laughs> Entertainment, <laughs> illumination, and justice. Exactly. <laughs> I don't think there's any justice at all. In well, why don't you see your mom hanging upside down because she was burned as a witch? That rope isn't in her mouth. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> there, have that nightmare for tonight. You're welcome. Hey, Bye, everybody. <laughs> so do you, like, tie a knot when you get it in there? You so take it a just small kind of dowel rod, and you just kind of force it down as far oh, as it okay, goes. Okay. That way it, it absorbs and leaks to the tip. 
Uh, that's definitely a cool death That's Carol. Hey, I, I'm all for using the bodies to power steam mechanisms and stuff like that. Kindling just started. I, I have a question on that front, but I, I'll wait till we're off the air on that one. Dang, Skippy. How's your empire collecting all its goods? And, uh, well, yeah, no, how's it collecting all its goods? Is it using slave trade? Is it doing taxes? Speaking of Roman stuff, I learned about the Dank Curions, and that was... I never knew! That's like, wow, philanthropy right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a point to it, but all that. <laughs> so how is your empire gathering all these uh, goods? And are they necessarily on the up and up, or are they doing some dark evil shit? Slave trade... Uh extortion all that fun stuff carol start all right so my kingdom uh empire know, empire we're empire. on the rise here that's right well it's ruled by a king king so hence uh no i would go with the tax collector and with the armed guards with the you know some military support to go around and collect taxes it is on the up and up uh that's the one thing is the religion does sort of demand you be good. Sort of like Christianity. <laughs> yeah. No, they don't yeah, make good, good call there. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, no, I'm not talking about And the Boy that. Scouts. <laughs> well, no, that's in their mind. But, I mean, like, stealing is bad. So you don't have people skimming off the top. They, they, they are very careful on who they hire as their tax collectors. Yes, I know, I know. I mean... Shut up. All right, oh. since those two shouldn't be talking right now, David, what are the goods that your empire is collecting? <laughs> and what's some of the shady stuff they're doing, too? Uh, well, I would say that, okay, my empire, like uh, the core of it, uh, find that the fringes are way too hostile of an environment or climate they can't stand it and they resort to an extraction strategy to where they're mostly using either labor or or slavery to farm all the resources whether it's farming mining or whatever and kicking that back up to the empire and stuff like that sure so, and what the empire provides for them is security so i don't know yeah, sure. Reminds me a little bit of the Mita, which is uh, Aztec, Inca, and the Spaniards. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, well, we rule you, and uh, for payment, since you obviously can't pay us, choose 40 of your members, and then you work in the city for the next year. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that completely fucked over that town, but you had 40 workers. Uh, Frank, how are you doing it, and how are you being an evil empire while you're at it? Well, if I'm evil, there's slavery. Uh, I, I detest using slavery other than just a few things at a time because uh, I'm all about freeing the slaves. Fuck that shit. If you're going to work, you should get paid. Uh, but in an evil empire, yes, uh, the defeated are forced into slavery. The paupers are forced into slavery. Uh, the enemies of the state are forced into slavery. It's pretty much Nazi Germany or Soviet Russia. Uh, in a good empire... Uh, everything is handled by the bureaucrats, and as I alluded to earlier, they're going to skim. That is human nature. <laughs> that is historical backing right there. They're going to skim, and when they get caught, they're going to pay. Uh, but I would also like to do uh, syndicates in the cities uh, as the CD underbelly, uh, because somewhere... Stolen goods have to get fenced and make their way back into the market, so you got to have that, those badass syndicate boys. The, it belongs uh, in a museum. That's right. <laughs> get the uh, Casa Nostra going in there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I miss some Indiana Jones. Mm -hmm. Okay. Crashed off lastly, and David made mention of it earlier, so there's your call out, David. Fantasy. This is a fantasy role playing game. This is why this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, just go play Total Rome War 
game computer. They're great. They're wonderful. That's what this is you get to do like. all the time. That. We're setting this up anyway. And yeah, we're definitely talking about Rome. Screw all the other places. Right. Uh, uh, but this is a fantasy setting. It's something you get to create. So what are you guys throwing in there that really sticks out uh, as this fantasy thing that makes your players... What's the hook, the line, the sinker that gets your players involved in wanting to play it? You can just say Rome, and I'm sure you'd get four players who'd want to play. But why not say <clears throat> Rome and an undead army legion? Or mm -hmm. if you're doing the whole British Empire, it's not a navy. It's a kraken that the uh, British Empire has enslaved, and that's why they rule the world. Uh, let's start with David this time, since you brought up the topic. You're taking so, all my good ideas. I like the Navy with the Kraken, man. <laughs> well, I mean, it could be Atlantis, an empire under the sea, too. Yeah. Um, what are you doing? Uh, how about uh, like a... <laughs> we live in an empire under the sea. <laughs> we're talking about the empire and all that. Well, what about with the rise of an empire also coming like a rise of an age of enlightenment where you start having, you know, magic start coming in and it's just like, you know, they're kind of like General Electric. We make good things come to life. You know, we make within the empire our resources uh, through magic and stuff like that. We like these other feudal states or whatever you know this is what we do this is how we make your life easy you know we can do things like control weather or whatever and i don't know I, i've read a lot of novels with high magic kind of like a awakened mage uh mm -hmm. where you uh the the ruling class had control over high magic where the feudal class uh weren't really <laughs> supposed to practice magic at all but uh come to find out within their bloodline or whatever they were actually more dru druidic and they were able to draw you know magic to help with things like that so i i, I kind of like you as far as fantasy goes like you know how there is kind of get your uh cast system where your wizards are exactly. your nobility as well yeah. Whether they, are they noble because they're rich enough to buy the components, or are they uh, upper class because they can actually learn wizardry? Right, exactly. No, that so, was an actual question. You have to answer. No, uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, right. Who knows at this point? And I mean, honestly, the idea of, yeah, no, your empire wasn't magical at first, but then you <laughs> captured the Wodgins from upper britain there and they had magic and your legionnaires sent it back and suddenly magic is now slowly pervading the rest of the empire that, right. that's interesting in which case or like you said the ruling class or the ones yeah. or the empire are the ones that practice magic what they need to expand the empire is finding the components for them to sure yeah facilitate that your warlocks are the peasants who were going hungry who had to make deals to turn into wolves so they could hunt deer and feed their family i'm not pulling from the dresden files or anything like that or how about uh, using the undead as you know your labor force you know absolutely yeah uh, frank what are you doing to make rome because you are obviously you know have a stiff hard boner for the romans i do how are you making the romans you know fantastical you know what I'm going to spin at 180 again, and I'm going to skip Rome altogether. I'm going to say, uh -oh. no, <gasps> I wasn't expecting this at all. Desert Empire. Okay. Theocracy. Clerics Theocracy. rule because they can create water. You mm -hmm. will worship us, or you won't get any water. That is their main draw. So even out into the outer provinces, not Dark Sun, I hate Dark Sun, uh, but even out in the outer provinces... The clerics are the rulers because they control the water supply until they a, reach the ocean. A syndicate finds a spring, and that is going to cause not only an economic problem, uh, but a belief system issue, as well as a uh, regional power play. Uh, so you got to uh -huh. send in the gods to uh, dry up that fucking well. Otherwise, uh, Billy the syndicate leader is uh, going to take over rulership of that province, and he's going to say, fuck your gods, I am your god. That's, That's what I do. 
That yeah. sounds like that magic item that I created. Remember that episode? Yep. <laughs> hey, we'll be talking about that next month. This month, <clears throat> civilizations. Uh, so then is your theocracy just poisoning all the wells and everything they encounter? It's like, ah, shit, they do have a fresh water source. The, uh, Not wells, anymore. The wells are unknown. Only the clerics create water. Nobody has decided to try and dig underneath the terra firma to find fresh water. So and you go the... into the next tribe, you kill their <sighs> cleric who had been creating water for them. Uh, sorry, guys. Well, we're leaving. Uh, oh, do you need some water? You may Give join us. Money. us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the saline content's too high in the ocean, so they can't drink that. Yeah. That's what creates trolls and giants. Distillation hasn't been invented yet. <laughs> All right, and Here Carol. I'm, wait, I'm trying to figure out which side the PCs would be on in this, you know. Well, we're asking that later. Come on, Carol. <clears throat> yeah, later. This is, this is Kyle's show. We're doing three hours. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, we're in it for the long time. I'm tonight. sorry. I thought, you know, with Frank's uh, episode the other day where he ran it for, you know, an extra hour and a half that that was the new standard for between the roles was i wrong am i supposed to be ending this now i apologize we had technical let's get to carol real quick all right so uh what was it well so uh, i've mentioned what are you doing to make it fantastical what is making your players interested in your empire intrigue intrigue i I like having i've said it before and i i'm gonna stick with it i like having threats to that empire uh, either by a neighbor which is the big thing that goes on in my setting anyways, is I got two neighbors that are basically fighting. One wants to take over the other, and they're the evil kingdom. Uh, so there's a lot of intrigue, and, and there's a ton of things you can do with that. So uh, I, that's what I would go with, is there's, there's a threat to that kingdom by another kingdom. Okay, where's the or fantasy Empire. approach to that? The fantasy approach? That's what we're asking for. I, Fantastical. Uh, What's the fantastical that you're insetting there? They're all dragons. That can... <gasps> oh my gosh, that's fantastic! 20. You should pay Frank $100 right now for that idea, because clearly that's the moneymaker right that's there. That's right. It's not his face, for sure. It's me a lot it's of his face. ability this to make maps through explosive diarrhea. That's the moneymaker. Can and to come I... up with shit like that. Jesus Christ, can I finish? So basically, I was going to say the fantastical elements really are just, I mean, there's magic in my world. And it's it's a lot of things you just normally throw in a and d campaign. This is just, this, you basically, why would my players want to play there? I, to me, the hook is the, the intrigue that's going on. But a lot of the fantastical elements, they're there. I mean, I've got, you know, fantastical monsters and, of course, magic definitely is part of it to me. That magic in itself, having mages and clerics and such. That makes anything fantastical. That's why I like D and D over like science fiction. You know, is is I love magic. I love sword. You know, swords and sorcery and and all that jazz. All right then. I'm See, gonna cut you off, it, Carol, because I'm gonna go around and ask for final things. And your answer to the final. fantastical was just to make it D and D. So let's gonna ask quick questions real fast. Uh, are you guys making any additions, subtractions? restrictions any homebrew additions if you were to say run the campaign going around the table david real quick Mm, restrictions any sort of restrictions i mean do your wizards have to be nobility yes (laughs) and that's the and that's the source of contention there (laughs) all right frank how about your campaign restrictions anything you're going to add on there can your wizard or can your players not play clerics because they can bring water? Uh, At least for the ascendancy uh, part. The cler- the PCs can play clerics uh, and work in conjunction with the players. The main theme is most of the populace is stupid and there are no maps, so they are unaware that the land of plenty does exist. They just have to know how much water it takes to get there, and oh, there's where their money maker is uh but they're stupid and no maps exist so it's like the initial sailors going out there well i hope i hit land <laughs> uh, and i'm pretty hope, sure like, i've seen that sand dune before no you no, haven't, you haven't. <laughs> there's no footprints in that Ooh, the wind's picked up 
Have you guys <laughs> found anything? We ain't they found, found shit. shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I would limit the spells, the scrying spells especially, because uh, I don't want them to immediately find out, oh, holy shit, uh, Iowa's right over here, and it's filled with rivers. Uh, that would be their, their big quest item. Mm-hmm. Sure. All right. Carol, are you doing any restrictions or adding anything? Or are you just going to run it plain old D&D? &D? Um, for pretty much plain old D&D. &D. I mean, <clears throat> obviously, if I'm talking about the country or the empire I was talking about earlier, uh, there the would be a restriction on what type of gods. And, yeah, that's an interesting thought. Maybe, you know, make, making, like, nobility being where your clerics come from. But uh, I'd have to think about that because I don't like to – put those restrictions on PCs. I like, you know, I like to have P I like <laughs> players. You can't always give what you want. No, no, no. The reality is I like to give my players options. I, you know, it's, I, I do, one I do, option. when I eventually, what, shit. You so can be a fighter I, up to fifth level and then you're done. <laughs> you have to go a level 20 campaign. Exactly. <laughs> No, no, no. Yeah, you know, you know, we can only be be like you and take like four classes. You know, not everybody wants to do that. I've never taken four classes in my life. All right, all right, three. What's until do we, do we this three? Saturday? I, I think it will benefit him greatly. No, <laughs> I admit you. I just, I never like. That's another discussion about multi-classing. Yeah, I'm no. not a fan of we it. We can talk but... about that later. Yes. Yeah. So, Guys, you kind of have an idea of what your empires are looking like, what your campaign is looking like. Uh, obviously, Frank, it sounds like the exploration pillar is the big thing you're going there. Correct. Although, how are you getting them involved in the ascendancy of the empire itself? There are no borders when you're trying to build an empire. So, you know, what lies beyond that hill? Is it Wilson, the floating volleyball? Uh, is it a camel? Maybe they follow, uh, maybe you have a druid and his animal spirit totem, uh, sends you across the sands or a barbarian and says, you know, there was once a land populated by apes that came from NASA astronauts. You just got to find somewhere it. <laughs> beyond the sand. Somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> totally. All right. Course. <laughs> Yeah. Carol, it <laughs> sounded like earlier that you were trying to play a pol politics heavy game where your PCs are really involved in making those treaties and then the intrigue squashing out any flames before they uh, turn into full blown rebellions. Yeah, I guess that sums it up. I mean, I don't, I, I tend to like to, you know, come up with past that I, my players would be playing probably today in this empire. And not in the past when there was all the warlords and going on. So I would just focus on the intrigue of today. But that's me. I mean, Carol, yeah. we're talking about the ascendancy, not the <laughs> decline of the empire or the peak of it. Come on. It could be Man. all soldiers. It could be all soldiers working for the 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 strong city state that's going out and conquering all the others. Sure. And right. they have it in their minds that they're doing it for the benefit of the others. Going with the old Fire Nation, eh? Yeah, yeah, they're doing it for the uh, the benefit. They're doing it because they're a bunch of heathens. Oh, it could be a crusade. Ooh, <laughs> nice. Ooh. Oh, the, no, I totally want to see like a tribe empire where it's a bunch of zealot barbarian deweys and they just go I out and conquer there. people. And right, Frank is looking a little pained. Are, are those are those pills starting to work their way through? I, I'm thinking uh, all I can see is the Udu clan. Yay, nice. I'll be honest, that one shot is in the works right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you won't make characters. I will assign you members of the Duke clan to play. There you go. I, I, I have one in prehistoric times where you will be assigned as well. Nice. <laughs> All right, David. Uh, what are you putting the roles? What roles are your players taking when they do this campaign from beginning to end of the empire <coughs> or beginning um, to peak i should say 
I would have them that uh, <laughs> they've been assimilated to the Empire. The magic users are cast kind of like Starship Troopers. Yeah, with Neil Patrick Harris going in with the... <laughs> <laughs> You know, with the Psycor and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, and just have, like, them as a unit made up of all those different, you know, backgrounds. Like I, sure. Like I said, you know, like your mage can control the battlefield, like the weather and the terrain or your druids, you know. So. Sure. All right. Yeah. And with that, because it's 914 and we end at 915, Final thoughts around the table. Make them really quick. Let's not start with Carol. Frank, go. Uh, final thoughts. It's your game. Make it how you want it, but make sure the players agree or at least understand what the risks are. Uh, player input is always preferable. Sure. David. Uh, discuss with your players what kind of campaign they want to run. It's just like, you know, I'm, like I was – you know, running a campaign for kids. You know, they were getting tired of their own campaign. I was just like, okay, guys, what do you think about pirates, but that are evil? And then they just jumped all over it. So, yeah, talk to your players. Give them what they want. If they want an empire, build it for them. Carol, say fuck the players. <laughs> Carol, what do you think? Pirate games rule, by the way. Uh, no, I agree with those two. I mean, oh, fuck the players? Okay, sounds no, good. And no, they no. You know, definitely. I know. I, I totally agree. Player input is very important. I actually like to. I like to run things off their backstory. So, to me, oh, the game's that's a good like, idea. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> backstories. What backstories? Hmm. Baby, hey, got backstories. Uh, this <laughs> empire took over your land. Tell me about it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. That's what the empire is going to take from you. <laughs> And that's how you run an empire campaign. You let everyone else decide what the, all the other countries were doing before you came over and lorded it all above them. Right. All right. And with that, everybody, that is Murder Hobos Between the Rolls. We've got a game this Thursday. We've got a game hosted by, well, Murder Hobo again. But it's being run by Carol. Uh, will you see the return of the most beloved character in Murder Hobo? Hedwig Murray hope. is ready. Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 will you? Are you and gonna Sunday play? is going to be the Margot campaign. With that, everybody, wait. Oh, I guess Cacophony doesn't get anything. Oh, yeah. No, I said oh, Cacophony. I, I said Thursday first. Uh, okay, <laughs> muted.